with all sincerity. He hears us. And we thank God for hearing our cries, hearing our prayers, and ministering to our needs. Just give him glory on today. Just give him glory on today. Bless and magnify his name. The Lord is good. The Lord is awesome. The Lord is great. There's nobody like him. So we bless and magnify his holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Join us as we go before the throne of grace. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless your name, God. We honor you and we give you glory, God, because there is none like you, God. You are God all by yourself, Father. We take this time to praise and magnify your name. We take this time to lift your name up high above the earth, God, because you are wonderful. You are glorious. You are magnificent. There is nobody like you, God. Father, we give you
Father. We bless you, Savior. Hallelujah. We honor you on your throne, God. We honor you. We magnify your name, God. We magnify your name, God. Thank you, God, because it's your anointing that destroy yoke, God. Destroy the yoke on today, God. Every yoke of bondage, God, destroy and break the chains, God. In the name of Jesus, God, it's for your glory, God. It's for your glory, God. Jesus, it's for your glory. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Broken heart and a contrite spirit. We would not despise God. We thank you, God. Thank you. Hallelujah, God. You're so mindful. You're so caring. You're so concerned. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father.
a great God, and there is no God like our God. Amen. We serve a wonderful and a mighty God. Thank God that He is simply good. He is good. He's good. Yes, He's good. Yes. He is good. Yes. He's even more than good. He's great. Yes. Amen. He's wonderful. Amen. He's sovereign. He's great. He's omnipotent. He's all knowing. Absolutely a stunning God. Amen. He's just simply amazing like that. And we thank our God. Amen. Because at the end of the day, who would not serve a God like our God? Amen. Amen. And we thank you for that. Amen. Amen. Thank you for those of you who have come out, those of you that have tuned in via social media. Listen, we're going to go right quickly into the word. Thank you all. Uh, just left from the village office, the village hall. Uh, conducting some things there, amen. So uh, we do what we have to do to get to where we got to go. Is that right? Amen. amen. So listen, tonight I want to close out our series on Just Ask, amen. I hope you all have enjoyed this as much as I have, amen. It has been a tremendous blessing to me. It's been awesome. It's just been wonderful. Uh, and I have learned a lot, amen, in this. And it has really really blessed me in this series. So let's go to the book of James, chapter number four. We were here uh, last week. We're just going to go a little bit further in the chapter, and then we're going to go to Hebrews, chapter number four. Amen. And we're just going to talk tonight about uh, accessing God, accessing God, because sometimes you don't get anything. Uh, we've already discovered the importance of the ask. We, we, we've already discovered that. We've talked about that. But tonight I want to point out how significant it is to be where the information is. A lot of times we don't know. A lot of times we miss because we're not where the information is. We're not at the source of the information. We're missing it because something is not there. I just learned about some summer stuff that has been taking place in the village uh, for youth. I just wasn't there. And whether it was printed, I didn't pick it up. If it was televised, I didn't see it. If it was shared at a meeting that I wasn't at. So sometimes when we're not in a place, we miss information. But tonight I want to point out to us that when we need something from God, we sometimes we have to go directly to where God is. Amen. Sometimes it's, it's good to have the word of God. It's good to have the man or the woman of God to give us a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, a prophetic word to teach us, explain things to us. But there are times where you just have to get directly to God. Amen. And God has given us everything that we need in order to access him directly. Mm -hmm. Amen. We don't have to go through uh, any middleman. Jesus was the middleman. He handled that already. The Bible says that he was the one who reconciled man back to God. Yes. And as a result, he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. When Jesus left, we looked at that last week, how he left the Holy Spirit. He said, if I don't go, I cannot send the comforter. Mm -hmm. And when the comforter comes, he will tell you all things. He will teach you. And so we've got to understand that God absolutely wants us to know. And sometimes he wants us to come to where mm -hmm. he is. So uh, James chapter 4, we've talked about this already about asking mm -hmm. um, we said that in verse 3 you have you ask and you receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust you're asking for selfish desires and he talks about the different sinners who are asking God for things and they're not getting because they're not friends of God they're not connected to God uh, and it says in verse 6 but he says God he says he giveth more grace Wherefore, he said, God resisteth the proud, mm -hmm. but giveth grace to the humble. And sometimes it takes humility to ask for certain things. Sometimes, I'm sure we've all had experiences where we've had to humble ourselves before we go in and ask for something. Some people you've gone to and you've had to say, you know what, will you forgive me? You've had to apologize. Whatever that looks like in humbling ourselves, sometimes we have to do that in order to come. I often say one of the fastest roads to the top Mm -hmm. is actually the bottom. Mm -hmm. If you can start from the low place, mm -hmm. that's kind of that 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 sets you in a place to propel or be propelled to the highest point. Yeah. It's called the low seat. And so sometimes we have to go in this way. Yeah. Jesus said, "If I be lifted up from the earth, he went down." 
The scripture says that. How could he ascend except he what? Descended. And so sometimes you've got to, we've got to humble ourselves and take the low ride or the low route and so that he can exalt us. He said that he will exalt those who are abased. Yeah. He, he's not after the proud. He's not looking to exalt the proud. And so if God's going to exalt us, that means he has to exalt us from some place. Mm -hmm. And we're never going to be higher than God. We're never going to be as high as God. And yeah. so we always have to come yeah. under. Right. So he gives more grace. He resists the proud. Mm -hmm. There was a song back in the 90s, Ain't Too Proud to Beg, come on, for what I call my own, oh, right. whatever else those lyrics were, right? And so some people are too proud to ask. Yes. Some people are too proud to ask. You know, that men, we always have, brother, we always get the reputation of not wanting to ask for directions, right? Women always give that example. I, I just be riding around, and I know the way, but he won't ask me, and he won't call, and he won't pull over, right? So, so if you don't ask, then you don't get it. If you're too proud to ask, then you lose out. Amen. Pride before destruction, a hearty spirit before a fall. So you lose out when you're proud. But he says he gives grace to the humble. And so grace is that extension that you need sometimes in order to get it what it is that you need. Whether you're asking for healing, yes. money, a job, a spouse, improved marriage, uh, you, you and your husband or wife want children, whatever you're asking God for, to me that humble, part of that humble is knowing that I can't figure it out. It's knowing that my networks and my resources won't be able to get this for me. And so I have to humble myself to say, you know what, it's not in my power, it's not in my strength, no one in my circle has the ability to do it. So you know what? I've got to go to the Father and the Creator because he's got everything. And he knows it all, right? And so he says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee yeah. from you. Yes. And so now he's teaching us, uh, James is teaching us here how to get. Remember, he started off with this. You're fighting, you're lust, you're killing people, you're trying to get all these things. You're asking, and you're not getting because you're asking wrong. And so now he's taking time to show them how, why they're asking is wrong. Mm -hmm. And so now he connects it to some level of sin. He connects it to some level of, of there's something broken. There's some level of disconnect that is there. And so James is teaching us that in order to really get to the things that God wants us to give. Remember, Jesus says, there's so much I want to tell you. Amen. Yes. There's so much. Yes. But in order to get to it, there's a way. Yes. There is a way. Everyone does not qualify for the greater of God. I'm sorry. Amen. I'm sorry. Everyone does not qualify for the greater of God. Yes. Everybody has an extension of his grace. His mercies are new every day. Great is the Lord's mercies. You know that. We get all of that. But you have to have a relationship with God to max out to get the things of God. Amen. Because Jesus didn't come for that type of grace. He didn't come that just sinners could live any old kind of way and have the same access and the same right as those of us who have died, who are dying daily, who have surrendered our hearts, our wills, our emotions, our plans, our opinions, who've given our whole lives by faith to God. It is totally unfair. And God knows that. And that's why he resists the proud. Yes. That's why he talks about the sins in verse 4. Adulterers, adulteresses, you know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Mm -hmm. And so when we're asking God for things, then we got to make sure that we are friends with God. Oh, yes. There are certain things you will ask your friend that you will not ask a stranger or an associate. Mm -hmm. Come on. There are certain friends, you know, friends, term used loosely, right? There are certain friends you won't ask for certain things. Amen. Because you're just not right there. You're not tight enough like that. Mm -hmm. But then there are certain friends. I have friends. I used to get mad. I used to track them down, call them, text them, email them, just being loyal, being consistent. And then I stopped doing that. But I noticed when they need something, they would call. Come mm -hmm. on. So why are you calling now that you didn't call back? I just reached out. I just wanted to know how you were doing, right? Mm -hmm. But then there's some friends. I don't reach out. They don't reach out. But when one person reaches on. out, the conversation continues from the last right. time we right. talked. Yeah. Yeah. And now the progression and the right. filling in of the blanks are there. And if they call and say, look, I'm in a bind. I need $300. Hey, all right, let's figure this out. What we got to get? What happened? Blah, 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 blah. But then because that's that level Amen. of closeness. Amen. Right. And so God is saying that when you want something, from me, there are conditions to your ass. Amen. Mm -hmm. There are conditions to your ass. Jesus was talking to his disciples. 
He was talking to his followers. He was that wasn't a blanket statement. Everybody's not everybody doesn't have access to the presence of God, the Holy Spirit. So we have to make sure that we are friends of God. The latter part of verse 4, James 4, it says, Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy to God. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we have to turn away. That's why we have to be sanctified. That's why we have to be separated from the things of the world, not the world. Mm -hmm. We are in the world. We're not going to be able to separate from the world. We live in this world. We live under this world system. But the Bible says that a kingdom mindset says that we're not citizens Amen. of this world. We're citizens of a different kingdom. Yes. So things that operate for us in this world don't necessarily operate. They don't operate for people who are not citizens right. of the kingdom of faith. Right. It's a different function, but we still here in the world. We got the, the Christian, the believer, and the non-believer have the same president. Yeah, thank you. The believer and the non-believer in the state of Illinois yeah. got to say pay the same rate of taxes. Right. And so we live in the world system. Jesus, when he told them, uh, I think it was Peter, maybe to go to the fish. We got to pay the taxes. I shouldn't have to. I'm, I'm a Jew, but hey, you know what? We're going to avoid distractions. We're going to avoid whatever problems. Go go fish. The first fish you catch, open his mouth, take that, and give them what they ask you for. Amen. Right? And so we've got to understand that we are friends of God. And when we are friends of God, he gives us the access to come to where he is and ask him what we need to. Amen. And when, when our ways please him, he will withhold nothing good from us when our ways please him. Don't you know that God, he's looking for yes. people to show himself strong in? Yes. He's Thank looking you. for people to manifest miracles in. And so it tells him in verse number seven, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, he will flee from you. Eight, draw nigh to God yes. and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye who? Sinners. Purify your heart. Who? You double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn. Weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy into heaven heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Amen. 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 And so he goes to the groups of people, the classes of people. And there's that, that word again, double-minded. Mm -hmm. He talks about that when you ask in a mess. Yeah. He talks about that asking without faith, wavering, going back and forth. And so when you resist the devil, why when asking something from God or expecting something from God does one need to resist the devil? Here, James is talking about people whose lives are not lined up with the word and the will of God. So the enemy is going to try to keep you at bay. He's going to try to keep you from God, from the relationship with God, so that you can't access the things that God wants from you. God wants for you, rather. For those of us who are believers, this scripture still applies to us. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Because the devil certainly does not want the believer to get access to the presence of God. Now, he can't stop us from the presence of God. He can only influence us yeah. from attempting or yeah. progressing into the presence of God. Mm -hmm. He can't block the presence of God. When he talked to God about Job, mm -hmm. I'll move the heads, but you can't touch his soul. Mm -hmm. Come on. The stuff on the outside of us is, is, is up, it's up for grabs. But what's on the inside Amen. of us is what we have to protect. We have to protect our spirit, man. We have to grow. We have to feed our spirit. And so there are times when we're asking the Lord things and the enemy hears your ask. And then now he's trying to get busy. Yes. He's trying to think. The scripture talks about, I think it's a psalm that talks about the bird that takes your word yes. and just goes and travels yes. along. The devil knows what we're praying for. He knows what we're seeking the Lord for. He knows what we're asking God for. And so sometimes you've got to know that the enemy will try to come with doubt. With Amen. fear, yes. with discouragement, yes. to try to make us not ask the Lord for the things that we need to ask him for. And so we have to know when it's the enemy. Mm -hmm. yes. I say this often. Sometimes Amen. you got to rebuke the devil. Sometimes yes. you got to rebuke yourself. Amen. Yes. yes. Sometimes you just got to tell yourself or your flesh, look, flesh, I rebuke you. You, you're getting ready to argue with somebody. You're getting ready to engage in a temptation that's not going to benefit you spiritually. You're getting ready to say something wrong, do something wrong. Look, flesh, in the name of Jesus, I, I, I rebuke you. Now I call you, I command you to come subject to the will of God for my life. I need God, and you are not going to get in the way of that. 
That's resisting the enemy, right? And so God absolutely, let's go to Hebrew 4. God absolutely wants us to be able to access him so that we can do what? Ask for what we need. He wants you to get to where he is. He wants you to love him. He wants to love you. He wants to give you all. The, he said in Psalm, what is it, 37, delight yourself also in the Lord. And he will what? Give you the desires of your heart. Amen. When you ask, you receive. Or it is given. And so the desires of the Lord are to give to his children. He wants to give it to us. Yes. But we have to do what? Please him. We have to please, we have to please him. Submit yourselves to the Lord. All right, so in Hebrews chapter number four, uh, this chapter is talking about the rest of the Lord. It's talking about how God worked and how he rested. He talked about how uh, there's a rest, there's a heavenly rest for the saints. There's a rest for the believers from all of our rewards. But for the sinner, they don't have the same rest. But what he says towards the latter part of that, it says in verse number 15, uh, we'll go to 14, Hebrews 4.14 4, says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, that's parenthetically stated, so that means Jesus is our high priest, let us hold fast our profession. All right? And then he goes on to say, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Yes. yes. And so God knows, Jesus knows, the Holy Spirit knows that we have weak places in our lives. He knows that we have health issues, we have temptations, we have doubts, we have fears. But the Bible declares that our high priest, right, is not so high that he cannot be touched with the feelings of what we're going through. As a matter of fact, it says, he in all points was tempted like as we are, yes. yet without sin. Yes. Yes. And so we've got to understand that our high priest understands where we are. Our high priest has a connection yes. with where we are. Thank you, Lord. Thank and you. so we need to always know that we have an advocate in Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. So we have a high priest that's going, if you're going to the, the Old Testament structure, that's going into the holies of holies. Well, Jesus is already there. Yes, we don't have to tie a rope around his waist in Thank case he was Jesus. unfaithful you, in his relationship with the Thank Father. You, he sits at the right yes. hand of the Father. Yes, he He's already seated. Yes. In the, and then the scripture tells Jesus. us that yes. we become seated in heavenly yes. places with him. Yes. Yes. And so when we understand that we're in a different level, we're in a different mm. kingdom, we're supposed to be functioning and living on a different level. I still got to pay property taxes with my saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled self. I still got to pay back the people I borrowed money from to have a home. I still got to pay all the people I swiped the card for or whatever I swiped it for. I owe them money. So I, it can't be, well, Jesus died for my sins and I'm seated in heavenly places and in heaven there's no credit and there's no bills in heaven. Yeah, I understand that. That's your spiritual kingdom where you live. But here in the earth, if you borrow it, you pay it back. It's called integrity. Yes, yes. It's called honesty. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now we know there's struggles, things happen, so on and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. And so he says that he is tempted just like we are. And so it says, let us therefore come boldly yes, unto the throne yes. of grace Thank that you. we may Thank obtain you. what? Mercy, Mercy and find grace yes. to do what? Yes. Help us in the time of need. And so it says, let us therefore. Let us therefore means that something has happened to make the condition for us coming possible. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's what that phrase, let us therefore, means. It's, it means that something has taken place that we are now qualified to come. Thank you, Lord. And so we don't need the Day of Atonement to go to the, to the Lord. The Day of Atonement is perpetual for us. It has happened. It's not happening again. It happened once and for all. And that was when Jesus died on the cross to atone for our Thank sins. You, the sins Amen. of the whole world, you, if the whole world will accept <laughs> the atoning yeah. death of Jesus Christ and the yes. salvation and the righteousness Amen. that Amen. he has brought to us. Yes. And so now we get to say that he, I have a high priest who understands me. 
who knows exactly where I am, who knows exactly what I'm going through. He knows my illness, my sickness, my weaknesses, my strengths, my thoughts, my failures, my successes. He knows what I'm going to ask or what he said. The Bible says he knows what you have need of even before you ask. And so there you go right there. There is a need. He knows you need it, but he's not going to give it until you do what? Ask. Come on now. There's, a, there's a, a, a parable that I've heard different preachers use it uh, about a guy, or I don't know if they call him Peter or whatever, they call, call it a guy that died and he's now gone to heaven. Mm-hmm. And he keeps walking past this warehouse or this building. Yeah. You all, some of you have heard this. And they say, what's in there? Oh, don't worry about what's in there. You don't need to know it's not important. Oh, what's in there? You don't need to know what's in there. It's not important. Well, now, you know, I want to go. So he gets in there and he's looking at all these boxes, huge boxes with all these names on there. Whoa, is my name here? Look, get out of here, man. You don't want to see him. He finds his name on the box. He pulls the box down. And in the box are all these things that God wanted him to have while he was on the earth. <laughs> And he said, well, how come he never gave me those things? Because you never asked for them. Because you never asked for them. And so he knows what you need before you ask. So that suggests to me he's waiting for us to do what? Ask. He's waiting for us to ask. And I, I have, this month, as we've been teaching through this, I have felt like I have been a rude son to the Father. Amen. Because I have, my prayer has changed. The ask. When I get to the petitions of my prayer, I structure my petitions in a question. Yes, Lord. I don't know about you, but for me, my prayer has been in the past, Father, you know, Jesus, you said in your word, whatever I ask the Father in your name, that will he do. So, in Father, in the name of Jesus... Then I start telling him to do, 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 do. Mm-hmm. I start checking my prayer this month. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, give me a financial miracle. In the name of Jesus, show us where the spoken word property is. In the name of Jesus, bring forth the people that are assigned. It, it changed my mindset. Because if my children come to me and say, Daddy, uh, take me to the store. Daddy, give me lunch money. Daddy, make my dinner. Daddy, where's my laundry? Daddy, do my laundry. I'm going to look at them kind of crazy. I have even learned to, I know that I'm a parent. My wife's a parent, and we can tell our children. There are times we have to tell our children what to do. There are times when I ask my children to do something, and they, they've been smart enough to say, uh, well, no, Dad. And I say, excuse me? And they'll say, well, you asked, Right? And rightfully so, but then dad comes up and say, now go do. Right? And so in my prayers, I've learned, I need to ask you, God. I need to ask you. Because Jesus said, whatever you ask, not whatever you command, Mm -hmm. do is a commandment statement. Mm -hmm. He didn't say whatever you command the Father in my name, he'll do it. Whatever you ask. And so I've learned to ask for what I need. Mm -hmm. Father, in Jesus' name, I am asking you. Thank you, Lord. Two, da 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 da. And then I say, Father, would you please? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm asking the Father. Mm-hmm. And so, whatever it is that I'm needing, I'm learning that I just have to ask Him. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, I know His answers, I got to find those notes, can come five different ways. Yeah, mm-hmm. buddy. <laughs> I have to be prepared for His response. Yeah. But my faith says, if I ask, He's going to answer. If I ask him, he is going to answer. And so let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. And so it prepares us, match that with James, it prepares us to know that we have to be in a place where we can actually receive from the Lord. In Psalms 1, it talks the first mm-hmm. psalm, it talks about who to hang out with. Yeah. It tells you who, who's going to be blessed. And yeah. I'm going to close with this. It tells you who, who's going to be blessed and how to be blessed. It tells you who's going to receive a response from the Lord. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't want to recite it. I want to read it to you. Blessed is the man 
that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the seat of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. Um, he, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly, hello, are not so but are like the shaft that which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of who? Of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Yeah. The blessing yes. is upon yes. the people who follow after God. Amen. Yes. The answers to the questions that we have, the needs that we have, the things that we have need of are reserved for those of us who are following after God. Your solidity, your, 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 your solid foundation to be like a tree that's planted by the yeah. rivers of water. If you are a tree by the Jesus. rivers of water, that oh, means God. you're being nourished 24-7. Yeah. Oh, that you are in the midst of a place where yes. everything that you need is always where it Thank needs you. to be. That provision is never running yes. away. Come on. Thank you. Thank you Lord. And so he says that you've got to walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you're, there, there is, a, what does the Bible say about the, there's a multitude of safety what, among the people of God. I can't remember the, the, the whole verse of it, but we got to know that uh, uh, there's wisdom, there's yes. safety among the proper yes. counsel. Yes, yes. Right? So you can't walk with the ungodly, no. you can't stand in the way of sinners, and you can't sit, sit with the scornful. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Come on. But you've got to have, I've got to have my delight in the law of the Lord. And I've got to be making sure that my ways please him. And I want to bring forth fruit in my season. Yes. Amen. Amen. In Amen. my season. Yes. Your season may not be my season. Right. Your season may not be her season. Her season may not be his season. Yes. His season yes. may not be her season. My right. season may not be her season or his season. In my season. Yes. Yes. And so now i got to know that when my season comes to Come produce. Come on. I'm going to produce. How am I confident that I'm, this is prophetic for me right here. How am I confident that when it's my season, I'm going to produce? Because I've been planted. Yes. Yeah. I've been planted. I've been nourished in the presence of God. I've been seeking the presence of God. I've been walking in the presence of God. I, I spent like two years looking for uh, somebody to do certain things for me. And God has given me to know that I am your supplier. I am your strength. What you need, they don't even have. Jesus. Thank Stop you. chasing people for what you mm -hmm. see in their lives. Some people yes. have what they have. Nobody gave them that. Come Nobody on. taught them that. They suffered. Right. They yeah. did. Yeah. They yeah. dug right. the ditches. They went through the trenches. Right. They wallowed in the now. mud to right. get Hallelujah. to where they are. And yeah. so how do you think you could? They say, you tell somebody you want what they want, Ooh. they'll turn around and tell you, are you willing to go through oh, what right. I went through again? Amen. Amen. And so to me, this is prophetic that when it's my season to produce, Come on. Come on. I won't have a problem yeah, producing Come on. because I've taken my time to yeah. rest hey. in the presence of Man. God. I've taken yeah. my time to dwell yeah. in the presence of God. It's conditional. Yeah. That's a prerequisite. You've got to be planted yeah. by the river of living water. Mm -hmm. Out of your belly shall what flow oh, rivers of what? Living water. Come on. And so you've yes. got to be in that living water. You've got to be in the right flow. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Because some waters dry up. Come on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, they do. But you got to be in the right place. Mm -hmm. And when we position ourselves in the right place with the Lord, mm -hmm. when our season comes. Well, mm -hmm. I told you last week, certain vegetables I planted, it say 60 to 75 days before you can expect a harvest. Guess mm -hmm. what that says? That there is an expected season. Yes. But what do I have to do? I have to water it. I have to feed it and provide nourishment for it. I have to keep it well supplied with the proper nutrition and nourishment so that in 75 days, guess what? It can produce. Yes. But I can't plant it and walk away from it and come back 75 days later looking right. for fruit. Amen. 
because I haven't invested in Amen. it. And God is saying that you'll be blessed when you invest <laughs> yes. into the things Hallelujah. that he's designed for Ooh, you to Hallelujah. be in. Yes. Yes. And that's why he taught me. You can't be chasing around people in every way and wind of doctrine. This season for this house or this ministry or this man or this woman of God, that's their season. I don't know what their miracle grow has been like. I don't know what's in their soil. Amen. Amen. I don't know what's been feeding Amen. them. I don't know what fasting Amen. and praying and struggling and yeah. going through. Yeah. They've been going through to get to Come where they down. are. And so I can't waste my season of preparation chasing other folks and what they have. Have and crying over how they have and what I don't have. As a poet, in, a poet, in opposition to that, I need to be in a place giving God praise and thanksgiving and worshiping yes. Him in yes. faith for what I have, Hallelujah. thanking Him in faith for what He's shown me that I will have, so that when my season comes, guess yes. what I can do? I can produce. Yes. Yes. I can bring forth the yes. fruit yes. that God, and guess what? When we produce, the fruit that we produce is the fruit that was expected by God. Mm. Wow. Yes. Wow. It's the fruit that was expected. Wow. Remember when Jesus cursed the fig tree? Because mm. he went looking for what should have been there. Yes. Mm. Yes. And I searched that out once before, and I learned that even the fig, it wasn't necessarily the time for the fig, the full fig to be produced. But the, before the full fig was still enough to give Jesus what he would have needed, yes. but not even that was there. Wow. Not even that was there. Yeah, yeah. And so there was an expectation for us to produce. Mm -hmm. When God went into the garden the cool of the day, Adam, where are you? Yeah. There was an expectation for Adam to produce himself, mm -hmm. to come and come submit on, and be in the presence of God. In the name but of he was hiding. Yes. Why was he hiding? Because he was not properly planted. He mm -hmm. uprooted himself from where God planted mm -hmm. him. And he did something contrary to what God wanted him to do. And so when we're asking God and when we're seeking him, we have got to position ourselves in the right place. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hebrews tells us we have grace. Yes. We have mercy. But when you leave the throne yes. that you freely and boldly can access, mm -hmm. when you walk away from that throne, we've got to plan ourselves. Amen. How is this prophetic, Pastor Anthony? This is prophetic to me. Amen. I don't know if you all receive this as a prophetic word, but I receive this tonight as a prophetic word that as I plant myself by the rivers, as I plant myself, what's the river? The river is the word of God for me in this season. Amen. The river is the voice of God for me. The river is the Amen. presence of God for me. As I plant myself and be like, I think that was Isaiah, set my face like Amen. a rock, like a Amen. stone, like a Amen. flint, yes. and focus on the things that God is calling me to do. I appreciate the people in my periphery. I'm looking like this because my periphery is here. I appreciate them. I celebrate them. Amen. I honor them. I salute them. I support Thank them. If they don't support, if they don't call, yes, if they Lord. don't give, I'm going to push them, I'm going to push them, yeah, I'm going to push yeah, them, yeah, yeah. because yes. the Bible says rejoice with them that do rejoice, because if I sow praise and yeah. thanksgiving for what you're doing, guess what? Ooh. Somebody's going to praise God and Thank give thanks for Jesus. what I'm doing. Thank and while I'm God. sitting yeah. here being planted by the river, while I'm sitting here allowing my yeah. roots, to, roots to go deeper and become stronger, somebody's watching Hallelujah. my stand. Somebody's right. being Hallelujah. encouraged by the fact yeah. that the wind is blowing Going, yeah. But my leaves aren't oh, going anywhere. The Lydia. wind is blowing. Come but my, my branches, they, they're leaning over. But they're strong. They're nourished enough that they're not going to Jesus. break. Thank you, Jesus. So because I'm plant, planted rightly or rightly planted, I might bend, but I'm not going to break. Yes. yes. Amen, Jesus. Yes. You know, you have those contortionists. They can take Ooh. their limbs and do all kind of weird stuff that I would never try to do. And if they don't break. You got to be solid. Amen. So the prophetic word tonight for me, it's up to you. I don't know if it's for you or not, but for Hallelujah. me, is if you stay planted, Pastor Anthony, in your when your season comes, you're going to produce. Amen. What does that tell me? That tells me there's something in me that God wants, and he wants me to be planted in him because there's coming a day where he's coming to look for what he has sown in me so that he can take the fruit of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, that's blessing me real well right here. And that I've got to get everything that God wants for me to have. In order to do that, I've Thank got to Jesus. root myself in him. 
Yes. I've got I've got to get to where he is and I've got to stay there. So I'm encouraging Amen. you all tonight that yes. get 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 rooted. Amen. Yes. Get rooted. Thank you, Jesus. Get your faith in the right place. Yes. Leave other folks alone. Amen. Hang out, celebrate, support. I'm not saying, you know, I, I don't I don't have that tit for tat mentality. You know, I'm not gonna let people abuse me, I'm not gonna let people take advantage of me, but I know. I know, I know where I'm supposed to sow. I know where I'm supposed to give. I know it. Yes. But right now, there's a season. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. There is a season yes, for me. And there's an expectation that when that season comes, ha. you hear that? There's an expectation that when that season Thank comes, Jesus. I've got to be ready. Yes, Amen. My fruit have got to be there. Yes, They've got to be there. So what does that tell me? Thank you, Lord. Thank Prepare. You, Lord. Prepare. Prepare. You asking God for stuff? Prepare. Amen. You believe in God for it by faith? Prepare. You asking for a new house? Amen. The current house is not packed up. It's not clean. It's cluttered. It's not organized. Prepare. If God comes along and says, you know what, I have a house for you, and they tell you you got two weeks to get in, you might have to throw away half of your stuff. Because stuff Jesus. isn't prepared, stuff isn't ready. Thank you, Jesus. When the movers come, you still trying to decide what's junk or trash and what you're going to keep with. Mm -hmm. And so what he's saying, he's saying, you got to prepare that there's a season coming. And when the door opens, it's not, when look, the time to go through the door is when the door opens. Time to prepare for going through the door is when the door is closed. Amen. Amen. Door, there are doors right now, spoken Amen. word, for us individually and as a ministry that Amen. just are not open. Yes, Lord. Doesn't mean that they're not our Hallelujah. doors. Yes. Doesn't mean that the lock isn't going to turn. You, but before the door opens, we can't wait until the door opens to go and get stuff ready. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all heard what we Hallelujah. talked about on Sunday. This is blessing my soul right now. Is that there's a place, there's something for us to build. There's something for us to build. That there's a release, there's a Cyrus. There's a Cyrus that's been assigned to spoken word. That's going to write letters and that's going to open doors. That's going to create passages and that's going to provide us. We got neighbors that are getting ready to bless us. Come on, receive the word of the Lord. We got neighbors that are getting ready to bless us. But guess what we got to do? We got to prepare. They go to the, it, oh, I got to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you look at Ezra, chapter 1, yes, King Lord. Cyrus, he prepared them. He wrote the letter, let the Jews go back. But before they go, he told their neighbors to give them silver, give them gold, give them provisions for their journey, and give them offering. He told the Persians. To fatten up the Jews so they can go home and build their temple to the Lord their God. And then he wrote a letter and said, these are the list of, this is the list of everything that Nebuchadnezzar took when he brought the children of Israel into captivity. He stored it in the place of their gods. Their gods could not receive the worship of the things that were blessed by the people of the true and living God. That had to be for the true and living God. So they had to take things that the God of the true and living God of the universe gave them and they gave it back to them. And they took it home with them to Jerusalem to build. I prophesy that there's a Cyrus for spoken word. There's a Cyrus for the people of spoken word. There's a Cyrus that's going to release and he's got the power, he's got the means, he's got the resources that there are neighbors among us who have extra, who have excess, who are going to give to us for the place that God has for us, that there's a rooted place for us in Jesus' name. There is a destined place for us, so we are being planted and we are preparing. There's an expectation. Our season, our season, our season, our season. Stay close to the water. Stay close to the source. Because you're a
season is coming. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. We thank you for your word.
see, and you'll be able to see over time as the vision that you've given it to and that you will give it to is coming to pass. You'll be able to walk through it with us, amen, and we'll appreciate continually everything that you do um, for us. We do, although we were short 3,000, we've got enough to get a whole lot done of the three things that we have. We're, we're, we finished phase one of our community development corporation launch. Um, and so you'll see that coming out shortly, amen. But it's still, we need more. We need more in order to get to where we're going, amen. Pastors get ready to upgrade that 2008 computer, amen. Because of what you gave, because of what you gave, amen, we're going to be able to do that, amen. And so we appreciate you, amen. Listen, this Friday night, we're going to be um, in a recording studio, a studio audience, uh, live video taping for an internet network called the Christ Family Network, yes. um, where they uh, are broadcast in 90 countries uh, that is viewed by over yes. 4 million people. Amen. It's a very humbling experience that God has brought our way. Uh, the host, uh, Prophet Renee Scott Jacob, is going to be interviewing my wife and I about Spoken Word Fellowship. Yes. Amen. Amen. And our vision Amen. that we just cast on Saturday. Amen. So the whole world can know what God is doing. Not what I'm doing, not what my wife is doing, but what God is doing through people uh, who submitted to him and who have said yes. And the address again, honey, is what? 6817 South Chicago. Amen. In Chicago. 6817. Amen. The doors open at 7 o'clock. I think the first show airs at 8. The show that will be on airs at 9. As soon as we know the airtime for it, we will give you that information. Amen. I'm asking that you pray for us. Amen. Follow us on Facebook Live. We'll be uh, sharing their Facebook Live from there. Amen. And so um, just pray for us that God will word our mouths and that for whatever he's designed this for, amen, that we'll walk in it the way he has. Amen. You can register early bird registration for the Unpacking Wonder Women's, Con Women's Conference. That's Friday and Saturday, September 15th and 16th. Um, Apostle Yolanda Stitt has been confirmed as the speaker for Friday night. Um, there's about seven or eight. Uh, workshop facilitators that have already confirmed there's a diversity of information that you can learn. Amen. It went up one day, and I think on the same day the first registration came through. Amen. So you want to get that early bird. With the early bird, you get a discounted registration rate, and then you also have a, um, a pre uh, pre conference. A reception and on their reception on that Friday night, you're gonna to get to meet some very cool people uh, in that setting. Amen. So just come on out, go to spokenwordfc.org. The information is there. The registration information for that conference is there. Amen. And we coined this on Saturday. We have put our faith under our feet and we are moving where forward. Man, we put our faith under our feet and we're moving forward. That's our tag, man. Don't take our stuff. Amen. But you put your faith under your feet and you move forward. Amen. Amen. If you want to give tonight, you can do so. Amen. We'll receive your offering. You can give online. You can give by text 708-265-3303. 708-265-3303. man, you can go to spokenwordfc.org. You can give there. You can give through the app. Amen. And if you just want to give the old-fashioned way, you can send your gift by mail to P.O. Spoken Word Fellowship, P.O. Box 750, Hazelcrest, Illinois, 60429. That's P.O. Box 750, Hazelcrest, Illinois, 60429. Let us pray before they kick us out. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We give you praise, honor, and glory. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence. We ask God that you would keep us, that you would go with us, and that you would go before us and make straight our paths. And we bless you for it now in Jesus' name. Thank God. Bless the seeds that are sown tonight. We thank you that you have made us good ground. And we thank you that every seed that is sown will produce fruit because we are planted in a position to produce fruit. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you and thank you for joining via social media. Here's the God bless you. Thank you. Peace and favor. God bless you. Thank you, Lord God.